Does everybody know what time it is? Well, it's time to stock up on some workhorse relays. So here's my relay box and fuse box on a workhorse W24. Uh, handy little uh, sheet right here on the back of the box, kind of tells you what everything is. Pretty self explanatory. You got your fuel pump, air conditioner compressor, starter relay, auxiliary fan, but there's a little weird one right here. That's a, the BTS1, which is called the brake trans shift interlock don't know exactly where that is or what it does but it sounds pretty important uh I, I do need to research that someday to see exactly what it's controlling but one thing i want to talk about i've had some relay failures and it can leave you stranded a, a simple relay is something you should keep on hand so it's time to stock up on, on a few of these relays and i'm going to show you a little bit about how to get the right relays and how to track down because these numbers have changed a lot over the years uh, so let me give you a scenario this can happen very easily because this is a 2005 and this happened to me going back for about four years ago uh, we was uh, stopped overnight at a rest area the next morning I went to start the RV and nothing happened turned out the failure was this little relay right here but let me show you give you an example so say for instance this would be a bad scenario. Say for instance you stopped at the gas station, shut off the RV, fill up with gas, and you go to leave, and this relay decides to go bad just at that moment. I'll give you the, the symptom. Let me unplug it. I'm going to go inside, and I'll show you exactly what you'll experience. Okay, so inside the RV, when that relay decides to fail, here's just what will happen. Key on, go to turn it, nothing. Just silence. You see your dash lights, all that stays on there. So if you're at a gas station and you're turning your key and it's not starting. So what are you going to do? You know, what's your first thing to think? Well, my starter just went bad. Well, maybe not. So, or bad battery, but you know, you got all, all the voltage and all that stuff. So that's a, something to keep in mind. Uh, but there is a way out, even if you don't have a relay with you. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so we've got a no-start condition. Luckily, we, these... These three relays are all the same part number. And so you can look over here and it's like, okay, what can I do without? You say, well, I want this thing to start. I could do it without the air conditioning compressor. So all you have to do is unplug this relay, put it in that position, and your RV will start and go, as long as that's the failure. So, but if you didn't have, if it was the only one and you didn't have, didn't have a spare, that would make for a very bad day. So that's why with, with the age of these, we need to get these stocked out. Like all four up top are all the same part number. You see it controls the auto brake, the ignition, and the ABS. So I keep a, I keep a spare one of these. I think I keep, I keep a couple of spare of this part number here, whatever this is. I'm going I'm to take you inside this computer and show you how to cross-reference these things. So I've got myself stocked up pretty good now for uh, extra relays just in case I need one. So let's go inside and uh, show you uh, some more tricks. Okay, before I go inside, let me point something out. Say, for instance, you've just bought your RV and somebody else has already changed some relays. Say, for instance, you figured out this relay is bad, but this relay has been changed and it has no part number. Then what are you going to do? Well, that's where save this video or print this. I'm fixing to go show you because I, I had that scenario. So I reached out to somebody else who had an, uh, a workhorse, same chassis, and I, I had them take a picture of it because their relays were all still original. So I had all the part numbers. So I got that saved on my computer. So let's go inside and show you that. So as you can see, I'm back at the RV again. Um, it's now three o'clock in the morning. And I got to pondering, thinking about this relay and what it did. It kind of bugged me. Because remember what our little diagram tells us uh, well what well, it's it's acronym here it's bts i think it's actually supposed to be an i it looks like a one i'm assuming it's an i bts i because that would make sense we're brake trans shift interlock i don't know why they'd be called a one for either way uh so now i know a little bit better about what it does so i said well what really does that do so i i removed it to see what would change. I figured it had something to do with the uh, shifting, so I'll show you what it does. All right, now that I've removed that relay, I'm inside the RV, notice now what I can do. See the brake pedal, see the gear shift. I can just take it out of park without touching the brake pedal. There's in park, there's out of park. 
don't have to touch great brake pedal. Now, one of my earlier videos, and, and this is a this is a great tip. I can't believe it took me ten years to figure this out. But once upon a time, I went to leave the campground. I could not, for the life of me, to get this out of gear. I didn't know what the heck was going on, and I finally figured it out. There is a wire, that little green wire under there. That one there, you know, you can unplug it in that situation and get yourself going. So that relay is what's controlling that solenoid. So uh, let's go back up front. So now that I know what this relay does, in fact, you hear it click. When it clicks, it activates that solenoid and fixes it so you have to depress the brake. It's kind of weird the way it works. The when you when you depress our brake pedal, our brake pedal has two switches built into it. One switch activates our brake lights. There's another switch that actually breaks the connection to that little shift solenoid, allowing the shift rod to release and of course take it out of park. So if you get in a situation where you can't get your gear shift out of park. Then you might try just removing this relay and then it should come right out of park. That'll remove that uh, it's, it, that safety lock solenoid will deactivate it. Of course, it's not very safe and you could, could bump around and knock it into gear and your RV go rolling over a hill. But if you're, stra you know, if you're stranded somewhere and can't leave the campground, that is a great tip. Anyway, now I've learned something today. That's always a good thing. Now I can head to the house. Well, as you can see, I finally made it into the house. And I got me a little bag of relays here that I brought with me that I carry with me. So, um, first, first of all, I got like five of this number. This particular relay here, uh, that covers, well, I'll show you over here on the computer screen. Because remember, our, our little schematic here tells us what's what. Oh, I'm going to go back to the other shot. This one here, because these three are all the same part number right here. So, and that's the one I had fail on me, the the starter relay, which ones? Yeah, that one, that right there. I had that one fail on me, and I had a no start condition. In fact, the one that failed on me is right here. And... You can see that's the original part number, the 121-93604, but it has since been replaced by a different number, 121-77236, and you'll find a lot of these relays, most every one of them has been replaced three, four, five times. Um, but it's really scary to think about. Those little set, set of points in there can leave you stranded if that thing gets corroded up or, or one of those little wires burns in two and gets messed up. So let me find... Yeah, because actually the points are, are right in here. That's your points. There's your magnet. When you turn on the ignition key, it closes down, makes connection, connects the connection to the solenoid, then the solenoid engages the starter, and off you go. So I, I imagine there's probably been a many uh, starters been replaced on many vehicles, you know, including the workhorse. Where the only problem is this little relay here is went bad. So for you know a ten dollar relay, could have got it up and going. But how many starters have been bought and replaced over this little part? You know that's where it comes to comes down to proper troubleshooting, not just not just throwing parts at things. And I try my best to do good troubleshooting. So uh, anyway, that's my old one. That's what it looks like. I got plenty of spares now. I got a deal something like on at eBay uh, oh, a couple of years ago. I got like five of them for 20 bucks or something other. And I like it because it's the original brand that Omron, if it's pronounced that way. Then also I've got me a, a, a spare ABS. This, these are the ones on top. Uh, let me see. All, all across the top. They're all the same. And what do they do? Let's see, oh, that little schematic doesn't tell. What the, I got them listed earlier in the video. I had each one listed. I know there's ABS, brake, different ones. But they're all the same part number, so I uh, carried me a spare one of those. I had one that went bad already, so I've had like three relays fail on me, you know, when I got a 2005 model. So if you haven't had any fail, they're most likely going to fail soon. So you need to stock up on some, you know, at least get you, you know, you know, one of these. And uh, this one here, what is this one number? I'm trying to make, oh yeah, I've labeled it here. That's, that's for my ABS. 
I've replaced it once upon a time. Then you've got that shift thing I just talked about. I, I don't have a spare one of those with me. That's not too critical because that's not going to mess you up as far as being able to get you down the road. But in taking my inventory, I realized I am not carrying a spare fuel pump relay. That's embarrassing. I thought I had them all covered, but I don't. But that leads, brings me to the next situation. So if you're going to go search for a relay, because you're most likely going to start with the part numbers on the original relay. But in case somebody's already changed changed your relays and you don't know what they are, you can go by this picture right here. These these are on the workhorse W24, W22. I don't know about I don't know about the P32s. If all these are going to be the same, they may be. But those are the original part numbers you can start with. But most of these original part numbers are going to mess you up when you try to go search for them. You won't find them. But I came across this really cool website. So there's the URL, oemcats.com. You can go there and plug in one of these old numbers. This is what I just did. So here's my here's my scenario. I want to get me a fuel pump relay. So that's a 121-77234. So if you try to go to Amazon, and let me grab this number real quick. Try to go to Amazon and put in this original number, thinking you're going to buy one. 121-77234. There's none listed. That's not it. You gotta watch these advertisers pop up and say the wrong part. But there, there is none. They don't carry that particular number. But if you go to this website and punch in that part number, just go. We'll, we'll do it. Start from scratch here. Do a copy. Let me go back here. Go to the website. Go to the home page. Do a paste. Find it. There it is. Relay. And then you scroll down, and it gives you all these superseded numbers because you see our number the, the 7234 everything in the yellow is how many times it's been superseded so we have like four or five different options to go with so i started plugging in these, these different numbers and out of all these numbers there's only one that actually comes up as a current number that's in stock when i punched it in it brought it up and uh and it is genuine GM relays. I like that ideal. And also look at the cool price. Three dollars and eighteen cents. So I'll get two of those. But you want to make sure you want to scroll down and make sure you're getting the correct part number. So you set see down here, OEM part number is the 219-97408. So we know for sure we're getting the correct part. So uh I'll get me two of those. But that's the way you can track down the correct relay. Uh, a little extra work, but you know you get the right part. And I think while I got access to all this data with all these different part numbers, I'll put them down in the, in the notes section of this video. I'm sure that'll be helpful to people in the future. But, you know, this is some cheap insurance. You know, you don't want a little $3 relay ruin your vacation, have you stranded on the side of the road or at a gas station or something like that. So, and you know, go through your RV, understand your RV, understand how it works. What's where the starter relays are, are located? Fuel pump relay, very important things like that. So hopefully, hopefully it'll help you out. And I guess we'll close this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.